Hello and welcome, my name is Alex and I am a full-time travel photographer. Today we are talking tone curve. This is a thing that confused me quite a bit in the beginning and I thought I'd try to explain it a little bit easier than what I got in the first place. So this video is going to be short, straight to the point, so let's get into it. Let's look at Lightroom first. So this is the software that I use to edit my photos. And you might be familiar with the basic panel where you can adjust the highlights, you can adjust the shadows, the whites and the blacks. And essentially what we are working with when we're working with the tone curve are the same four elements plus one more. So what made me confused in the beginning was that I used to be working through my editing and then at some point I'd meet the tone curve panel. And I didn't really know how to get around it and how to use it and it seemed just kind of like mess up my entire image. So what I've been using and doing with it in the past, I think, few years has been that I'm actually starting with the tone curve now. So it's the first thing that I do when I get into an edit. And now you probably already know this, but I always recommend you shooting raw. That gives you a lot more information in your photo and it makes it possible to utilize the tone curve even more. But let's take a look at the tone curve. So we have the tone curve right here. And right now it's just a straight line, as you can see. But what we have is down in the left corner here, we have the blacks in the lower third. We have the shadows, as you saw before in the basics panels as well. Then we have the highlights up here and the whites up here. And what you can see is if we take the blacks and we drag them up, you can see kind of like how the image gets more faded in all the black areas. So this is what it looked like in the beginning and now it gets more faded. That's because when we drag it upwards, there's no more true black in the photo. You can actually see it on the top. We have the histogram as well. Don't worry, I'll make a video about what the histogram is as well. But essentially you can see the different parts of blacks, shadows, uh, mid-tones, highlights and whites as well. And what happens when we drag this up is you can see all the black areas. They move to the right, they move towards the mid-tones. And when we drag them all the way down, that's how our image is to begin with. Then if we drag them to the right, you can actually see how the image gets more dark. And all the blacks is where there's no details. And right now we have the, the clipping showing. And you can see there's a shortcut for that called J. So if we hit J on our keyboard, we can highlight this or we can just hide it as well. So when we have it highlighted, you can see all the blue areas are where there's all black, there's no detail left. The same goes with the red ones. That's all the whites where there's no detail left. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing. For this photo, I'll probably want to get more details into the blacks. So this is not how we want to work with it. Um, but you can see if we zoom in, there's no details at all. It's just all black. So let's get this back to the beginning. We can, we can double click up here then. And then we get back to, to the beginning as well. Now we touch upon the, sh the blacks, the shadows, the highlights and the whites. But in the middle, we got the, uh, the mid-tones as well, which is a slider that you don't have inside of your basics panel. And what your basic panel basically do is that when you have your highlights, when you turn them down, it pulls all the highlights, all the bright tones closer to the mid-tones or decreases them. And the same way if you pull them up, it pulls them away from the uh, mid-tones. So you can see we actually get sort of the same thing, but the slider is just only a slider and you don't really have much control, which is why I like to start with the tone curve. So now I'm going to show you how I use the tone curve. So the basic thing that I started with is always to just make three points. You've probably seen this before if you've seen other tutorials. Now, the most common known tone curve there is, is the S curve. And that's because if you drag up, if you make these three points and then you drag up a little bit, you increase the highlights. And then if you drag down the shadows, you create some really nice contrast. And you can see how this already made our photo look way better it's more contrasty now it's not as flat and it's flat in the beginning because i shot it in raw so this just helps to bring back some of the contrast and information into the photo now 
We still have some highlights up here that are clipping. I'm not really caring too much about this. If we tap J, then you can see that it's kind of just misty and stuff and I don't really need any detail up here. So for me, that's fine. I can increase the uh, highlights a little bit. That's not a problem at all. Now, what I like to do as well when I work with the tone curve and why I like to start with the tone curve and not start with the basics is that I actually like to increase the mid-tones a little bit as well. And what we get here is that you can see we have a lot more contrast, but we also brighten up the mid-tones, which is usually where our subject is. So that just brings a little bit more contrast away from the shadows and just opens up the image a little bit more, I think. This is the after, so this is when I increase the tone curves, and this is before. So you can see we got a little bit more, a little more power of what you can say in, in the mid-tones. So this is what I like to do. This is just a really small and simple tone curve, but depending on the photo, I will go more or less. So this is, uh, this is maybe not the smallest tone curve, this is maybe a medium one. We could increase the highlights even more and then decrease the shadows even more to bring out a lot of contrast. And the highlights, I usually don't push them that much. I think this is pretty good. I think this looks pretty good actually. So you can see how flat it was before, before we did anything and how contrasty and nice it is now. Now I'm not saying this is good or this is perfect, but this is a really, really great beginning to push our file a little bit more and create some contrast. And then we can jump into the basics panel and we can adjust it so we say, oh, I want the highlights to be a little bit, to get a little bit lower. And maybe I want some more uh, shadows in here as well. But now we've opened up the image and we have a lot of detail and we have a lot of contrast because we also did the tone curve and we did that first. So now we don't have to go up and beyond with these sliders. We can just slightly adjust them a little bit instead of having to go crazy with them. And I also like to control the blacks and the whites more inside of the tone curves. So that's just a little bit easier to understand what we're doing, especially if you want that faded look where you can just bring up the shadows a little bit or the blacks a little bit, sorry. Now this is how I like to do it, but I think you should start with these five tone curves to try and make those work for you. And I have a really simple and easy way to show them to you uh, and make it easy for you to use them in the future. So. Let me just show you what the tone curves are first, and then I'll show you how to save them and easily use them for yourself. Now, if we reset this, the tone curves that I suggest that you use is the first one is this basic one. We just make a little bit of adjustments, and this is just our really basic S curve. Now, the next one is going a little bit more into it. So this is the second one. We increased it a little bit more. And then the third one is where we just increase it even more. So we create a lot of contrast in our photo. And the good thing about saving these is that when you go through your edit and you've edited a lot with the colors and everything else, then it's nice to go back and just try the different tone curves because sometimes you might start with a really contrasty one, but then end up using a slightly less contrasty one just because it looks better in the end but you want to start maybe with some more contrast to play around with your image, then find adjust it afterwards. I find myself often coming back to the tone curve at the end of my edit, just to fine tune a few things and see if something looks better. But this is a really easy and simple way. So these were the first three ones. Now the fourth one is where you just raise the midtones a little bit. You can also save all of the three other ones with the uh, mid-tones increase as well if you like that. Um, that's my personal preference, but the most common ones are definitely the ones where you just leave the mid-tones in the middle. And then the last one is, if we move that point again, put it back in the middle, that is to increase the blacks to get that faded look into the blacks. Kind of like this. All right, so let's just get this back to the beginning and let me show you how we actually save these. So let's make a simple one. Let's make the kind of middle, middle one one again. So this is just a small adjustment. You can see how it brings some contrast into our image. And actually, if we just remove our settings here, you can see it did a little bit more. So the way you want to save this is you want to go into your presets in the left panel with your navigator, you should have this preset available. 
It's only available when you are in the develop tab. Just just make sure that you're in there. You should be when you're editing all over here. And then you just click plus on your preset and then create preset. Click that. And then let's call it medium tone curve. And then you want to make sure that you check none. So nothing is selected at all. And then you just click the tone curve. Now, what this does is that when you click create, you see that I have a lot of presets here, but we have our YouTube presets here. And this is the one that we just created. So let's just reset our image completely. This has removed anything that we've done to the photo so far, which was basically just the tone curves. And when you go in here, our YouTube preset, and you click the medium tone curve, you just apply that immediately. Now, the good thing about the way that we did it here, when we saved the preset with only the tone curve, is that if we just click reset again, and let's say that we go into the basics panel, we lower the highlights a little bit, we increase the shadows, we might increase the clarity a little bit, and I'm just doing some random stuff, by the way. Uh, we might go into the color grading, and we want some blue into the shadows, just to pop the greens, and we want to have some reds to yellows in the highlights just to create this kind of illusion that there was actually sunlight like that okay so now we've done these things and we don't have anything done to the tone curve but if we go into our preset now and we select our medium tone curve you can see that everything else is still there so if we go into our basic panel nothing has changed if we go into our color grading Nothing has changed in here as well because it's only affecting the tone curve. So that's a really easy and simple way to just save your tone curves, save any setting that you might like individually. So you can actually, instead of just having a preset that does a lot of things to your photo all at once, you get this kind of way of just playing around. It's still a preset, but you can just click on individual things instead of having to just have the entire image explode into color and stuff, then you're trying to figure out what to do. So this is the way that I suggest that you do it. I'm not trying to sell you a preset. I'm just trying to show you how to do this because I don't really believe in presets myself. I like to just edit from the bottom up and I like to help you to understand how it actually works. Now, one last thing to mention is that in the tone curve as well, we have some other tabs. We have the reds, the greens and the blues. So when we are in the first one, that's basically adjusting contrast. But when we go into the other ones, we can adjust the different hues of the different areas. I don't really want to go into this in this video. Let me know down below if you want a video that covers this. I don't really use it much myself because I don't find it necessary. The way that I work with colors is in the HSL tab, which we can go over as well if you'd like. And then I use Photoshop to fine adjust. I'd love to show you that. Let me know in the comments if you want that. But just to make it easy for you if you're just starting out, leave those three alone because you don't really need them. You need the first one for the contrast and I'd suggest that you start out with that one. Create the five presets and for the sake of just making it easy, here are the five presets that you need to save again just to show you what they look like. And then you can pause the video, you can go back in the video and you can create them for yourself. You can create even more and just play around. These are probably the most common ones used, the ones that I use myself. And I think you'll have a lot of great use of them. To not make this video way too long, I think that's it. So until the next time, take care.